Hello and welcome to Wildwood, here just outside of Canterbury and Herne Bay for a UK first in conservation. Today is a groundbreaking day, one which marks a huge milestone for an ambitious landmark five-year project between two charities, Kent Wildlife Trust and Wildwood Trust, and generously funded by the support of the players of the People's Postcode Lottery. Over approximately the next half an hour or so, we will be releasing three European bison into the woods here at West Blean and Thorndon Woods as part of a pioneering conservation project designed to restore a more resilient and biodiverse landscape. Known as ecosystem engineers, these bison are part of an experiment to test a nature-based solution to habitat management, which could be a key tool in tackling the climate and nature crisis. We're currently on site anticipating the release of the bison very shortly, so we do hope you will stay tuned to watch and witness this landmark exciting moment. Exciting not just for the charities involved, but for UK conservation as a whole. This really is a hugely important project that wouldn't have been possible without the support of the players of the People's Postcode Lottery. So while we wait for the bison rangers to do their final checks, I've got a video recorded over the last few days with the chief exec of Kent Wildlife Trust to tell us more about the importance of this project and why the People's Postcode Lottery has been so critical. I do just have to say before we play the video that this video and a couple of others you will see later on does feature Hades von Wildwood, who is not one of the bison to be released today. So without further ado, let's roll the video. I'm very excited to be joined by Evan Bowen-Jones, who's the Chief Executive of Kent Wildlife Trust. So Evan, why is the Wilder Bleen project so important? Uh, loads of reasons, but um, I guess the main one is that UK conservation really needs to do things differently. Um, you know, we're in the middle of a nature and climate crisis. Uh, we don't have any time to waste. Uh, we've got to restore nature at a scale that just hasn't been done before. So we've got to bring every tool that we can uh, to, to bear uh, we've got to look outside the UK and we've got to be innovative. So this is basically the, the start of that journey. It's getting big animals to do um, what volunteers have been doing on a much bigger scale uh, and creating a climate resilient, adaptable, biodiverse, bioabundant landscape in a way that's just not been possible without these big animals present. It's absolutely vital, of course. And how did this project align with the wider goals of the Kent Wildlife Trust? We've kind of aligned as an organisation to innovate and take action in, in the climate and nature crisis. So that's our modus operandi now. Um, we're not going to hold back and we're going to take action and um, do things differently, break the mould in a constructive way, um, you know, show the way forwards um, and just get on with it. And can you give us any sneak peeks of what's going to be coming up next? Uh, lots of stuff coming up next. Uh, one of the things we really need to do to enable you know, the, the scale of conservation that I'm talking about is to, to get the financing sorted. And when you restore habitat, um, you actually lock up carbon at the same time. So we've created a mechanism for selling that to the market, the voluntary carbon market, called Wilder Carbon, and we're going live with our first sales in the next month or so. So that's going to be the first nature and carbon standard of, of doing that kind of work in the world, probably. Um, and we're also going to be on a kind of more species front. We're going to be releasing chuff back onto the White Cliffs of Dover uh, later this summer. And then in the Bleen coming next, we'll probably have Pine Martin. And, and if that's successful, in within 10 years, maybe Red Squirrels as well. So why is the support from the players of the People's Postcode Lottery so important? Well, quite simply, we couldn't have done it without them. Uh, this is an expensive project um, because it's cutting edge. Uh, things like the fencing are incredibly expensive at the moment. We want to pave the way for other people to do it easier, cheaper going forwards. But someone has to back us to do this innovation and that's exactly what the Dream Fund has done. So it couldn't have done it without them. They are fantastic. Thank you very much to Evan for that video earlier on in the week. And as I mentioned, the support of the players of the People's Postcode Lottery has been so vital because this is really a cutting edge project. So I mentioned earlier on, this is a UK first for conservation. So it's a big deal, but 
How did this collaboration between these two charities come about? Well, I'm very pleased to say that I am joined now by members um, of those two charities. I'm going to speak first to Paul Hadaway, who is the Director of Conservation at the Kent Wildlife Trust. Paul, thank you for joining me. Good morning. Thank you. How are you feeling at the moment? Are you excited? Excited, nervous, um, all sorts of things. I mean, it's been a really emotional kind of journey to get us to this point, and we really are, as you can see, at almost at that kind of moment we've been waiting for for, for four years now. So yeah, it's an extraordinary um, project to be part of, an extraordinary team of people to work with. And when you're just pushing the boundaries the whole time, you know, it is that mix of kind of nerves, um, anxiousness, and just sheer excitement now. Amazing. And can you tell us a little bit more about the wider vision for this project? Sure. So, I mean, we're stood in, in West Bleem Woods, but West Bleem Woods is part of a much bigger complex here. So Bleem Woods is an area equivalent in size to the New Forest, the Forest of Dean, a massive, massive area of woodland here um, where we've got several isolated woods and, and areas of connectivity between that we can begin to develop and build. So the idea is to get you know, dynamic ecosystems back into our woodlands to move away from man management, from tools from chainsaws brush cutters um, tractors all that sort of stuff and move something that's much wilder you talked about nature-based solutions earlier and the idea that actually this kind of natural process driven management is what is going to help us with the, the climate crisis which of course everybody's going to be very aware of in the next few days with the, the kind of temperatures we're seeing this kind of adds a resilience to our, our landscapes and to our habitats by using these animals that allow them to, to sort of adapt and actually meet those those kind of challenges. So there's a lot wrapped into this project, but longer term, connecting that bigger area of Bleenwoods up and having bison and grazing animals throughout, it's going to be amazing. Absolutely amazing stuff. And what's the preparation been like in the last few days? You must have been really busy. What, what are those kind of final days like been for you? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, this has been um, weeks and weeks and weeks of kind of what's felt like final preparation because there's been a lot of work to get the, the licensing in place to get the animals. And, and thankfully, that's where Wildwood's expertise comes in. From a Kent Wildlife Trust point of view, just getting this infrastructure, you can see this is a you know an infrastructure heavy project because of the UK regulation around these animals, which is something else we're challenging through the project. Um, so oh, I think we're about to open the gates actually, um, okay. which is going to be quite exciting. So um, yeah, there's been a lot of work going into just getting us to that point. Um, but here we are, here we are and there we go. There's our matriarch coming out. That is just stunning, isn't it? Amazing. Absolutely stunning. So behind her are our two younger females. Um, and yeah, the anticipation is she will lead the way and they will follow out. But um, they're a little bit more nervy than she, she is, so we'll see what happens. You can see her looking back there for them, yeah. kind of almost yeah. beckoning them out. Yeah. Is that kind of a, the, the sort of behaviour you'd expect? Is this what you expected? Um, it is, and look, here come the other two now. This is exactly it. She will lead the herd. So you can see around her neck there's a collar. There's also a collar on one of the young females. She will lead the herd. She'll choose where it goes. And it's really interesting because we don't know how they're going to move around this, this landscape. Um, you know, there's an anticipation they're going to follow the food, and you can see them already tucking into the birch that's there. Um, but, you know, they will um, potentially um, be aware of plant species and things they eat if they've got bad stomachs and things like this. So that their movement around the woods is going to be really interesting to monitor and those collars allow us to do that. Um, but she will be very much the boss. The bull will come in and he will sort of be on the peripheries um, and will just come in at certain times a year. Um, and then hopefully the herd will, will grow. So we should have more than four within a, a year, 18 months. And you mentioned the bull coming in. Is that that's later in the year, right? It's about a month away. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they would have a chance to settle. He's not so important to the herd dynamic because he won't join. You know, he will be sort of satellite to the herd, um, much as, as sort of a lot of um, male um, deer, stag do that as well. You know, where they will come in during during the rut and then go again. Um, so really, the the key animal is the the matriarch. She's the one that leads the others. But straight away, they're doing exactly what we'd hope they would do. They're heading for that birch. Um, we've got trail cams and GoPros in the birch there. As I say, with the, the collars, we can track them. So we're going to be able to just keep an eye on what they're doing and, and see what they're doing and get some of this really natural behaviour, which you won't see. So you know, um, domestic animals will not eat birch like that. They won't strip the birch branches. They won't push this stuff over. This is why they are these ecosystem engineers. It's exactly that sort of behaviour. So oh, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. 
And they do look very relaxed. So well-being, I think, is, is the critical thing with any wildlife stuff like this, I believe, isn't it? Absolutely. So, I mean, we made it very, very clear from the start. You know, this is a, it's a wilding project. You know, this is about using these species to do as wild or a job as possible of the grazing here. But you have to have welfare issues and roving into that. Um, so, again, the, the collars will allow us to track them. Our two bison rangers will be keeping a very, very close eye on them during this first period. The fencing is designed to keep people out. Um, and so, you know, the whole thing is about their welfare, about their disturbance, and about allowing them to be as naturalistic as possible. So the next step of this project is to put tunnels in to allow them to move around the woods so they can move under public rights of way. Again, all geared up to letting them behave as naturalistically as possible, which is what we really need them to do. Well, it looks like, am I right in saying they've disappeared from our view here, haven't they? Are they, are they out? Are they gone? It looks that way, doesn't it? It absolutely looks that way. Well, there's a water hole for them just down there as well. Um, but, yeah, looking at the, the team all moving away, I can hear them. I can hear a bit of crunching going on. But, yeah, I think that's it. That's it. We probably won't see them again for you know, another year when they when next come around to be checked. Amazing, Amazing. stuff. Thank you very much, right. Paul. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there we go. The bison are out. They are in the woods. It's been an exciting moment. They were straight out of the gates, almost straight away. So we weren't quite sure how long they take, but we saw it. They were ready to go. They were clearly um, excited to get out in the woods. So I'm going to welcome in now um, Paul Whitfield, who is the other key person, the Director General for Wildwood Trust. Okay. Paul, how do you feel? I'm actually really emotional at the moment. <laughs> it's just amazing. I mean, three years of work to this point, building this up and to see the gates open they came out they were relaxed had a snack and then they've gone into the woods to do their thing to be out there as ecological ecosystem engineers and yeah it's, a, it's an amazing day it really amazing is. amazing it's wonderful to see how much this means to you oh it does yeah can i take you back a little bit to i guess when this project was started this has been a great collaboration between the two charities how did it come about Ah, we've been talking about bison in the bleem probably for 10 years and we it was just it was one of those things that was just a bit of a bit of a pipe dream bit of an idea um, and then it was I, I started running wildwood about five years ago Evan took over Kent Wildlife Trust about four years ago and we were talking about what we can do together what we can work on together and it seemed like such an obvious partnership in terms of wildwood expertise at breeding and handling native species and Kent Wildlife Trust owning large areas of land, but also being fantastic people at monitoring that land and managing it and bringing those two skill sets together. It seemed like an obvious thing. Sorry, I can hear them cracking through the woods as I speak. It's brilliant. Um, and so it was an obvious thing to do. And, you know, bison was a huge ambition for us. Um, we went over to the Netherlands, quite a few of us from both organisations, saw a few of the projects there. And we were, I think the the turning point we were stood in a field with a herd of bison there was no fence between us they just had a calf a couple of days ago and just to be in their presence was so powerful and we thought we've got to be able to do that here we've got to do it in England we've got to give people that experience of large herbivores back in the wild and give people that experience of being with nature again so they're going to act as ecosystems engineers out there. They're going to change the habitat. They're going to create an explosion of biodiversity. They're going to make the woodland more resilient to climate change. But also, they're going to give people a huge connection with nature. You know, we've lost that in this country. People go for a walk in the woods and you don't see any wildlife. We need to bring the wildlife back to our wild spaces. Absolutely. It's an amazing thing to have right here in Kent as well. And, and even better, I think, that it's that UK first to be able to spread the positive work. And I bet you're going to have lots of people kind of coming to chat to you and wanting to know more about this project. And hopefully for the future, there may be more to come, both from what you guys are doing and other, other kind of organisations, maybe. Oh, absolutely. There are already three or four other organisations that are looking at the potential for a bison project inspired by this one. But the other thing that this one was, is going to do is we're bringing in really important genetic lines of bison into the country and they're going to be breeding out in this project and they'll be creating young bison to go off to other projects in the future. You know, all these animals are part of the European Endangered Species Programme, so they're part of the species recovery for bison and there's so many future potential projects for them to do. This should be a real inspiration for other people to do the same and a real door opener. You know, we've done it first, we showed that you can do it and now, yeah, there's a great opportunity for other people to follow and, and, and do more of it at bigger scale.
Paul, it's been amazing to hear this and it's wonderful to see how much it means to you and the rest of the team I can see around here. So thank you very much indeed and I'll let you go kind Fantastic. of enjoy and celebrate. Thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> so as you can see here, the bison have gone out. They were very quick, they were very relaxed and it's wonderful to see them going out. So we're going to play a little video for you in a moment to give you a little bit more of an insight into the European bison and why they were chosen specifically. But one thing to mention before we do that is the fact that this project has been run by two charities. So none of this would have been possible without the support of the donors, sponsors, members and everyone who visits this space, which all contributes to the charity being able to do the amazing work that they do. So if you want to support um, the both the Kent Wildlife Trust and Wildwood Trust, then please check out their social media uh, and their websites to find out more information about how you can donate and also more information about these projects. It is uh, Kent Wildlife Trust .org.uk and wildwoodtrust.org is the two websites you want to be checking out and you can find out how to donate. Okay, I believe now we're going to go to a pre-recorded video recorded in the last few days um, with Mark Hadaway, um, oh sorry, Mark Haben, and uh, he is going to tell us um, a bit more about why European bison were specifically chosen. I'm joined by Mark Haben, who is the Director of Zoological Operations here at the Wildwood Trust. So Mark, why was it specifically that European bison were chosen? Okay, so the European, bi uh, European bison, as you can see behind us, is the heaviest uh, wildland animal um, across Europe. And that weight and a lot of their behaviours really lend themselves very well to this kind of wilding project. Um, they push through brush, they push through lots of small trees and actually some of that behaviour that you see from the European bison rubbing up against large trees, all of that weight, 750 to 1000 kilograms, you know, huge weight from the bulls, um, it strips the bark off a lot of the trees and those non-native trees will die off, they create habitats as well for woodpeckers and invertebrates um, and of course there are species that we're, we're sadly very much lacking in the European landscape. So what do you think will happen when the bison are released? <laughs> immediately? I think what will immediately happen is um, they're quite an inquisitive animal so I think they'll probably approach the gate, they'll see that something is very different and they've got all of this browse and food in front of them and then it'll be a bit of a waiting game. That's what I think might happen. Now it's, it's the beauty of these events is that anything can happen on the day, it could go charging out and uh, off they go. I think that they'll probably tentatively look at the gates, the opening and the space and uh, they'll, they'll be taking it in turn, they'll, they'll want to see, one of them will go first, probably the matriarch um, and then the others will follow. That's what I think. And what's the next steps once they are released? Well, once they're released, we're going to be doing an awful lot of monitoring um, in and around the environment because it's really important that we get to be able to see what they're feeding on. Are they feeding enough? Um, they've got lots of their preferred favourite browsing um, f food plants around them. And that's one of the other reasons for the European bison. They browse as much as grey. So they'll be feeding, we'll be monitoring them. Um, and once we're really comfortable that they're feeding really well in the soft release space, then we'll open it all up and off you go. Mark, thank you very much. My pleasure. Welcome back. The bison have gone. They are out in the woods. This is exactly what we hoped for. But this is just the start of this project. There's some exciting next steps to come. So I'm excited to say I'm joined by Stan Smith. You are the Wilder Landscapes Manager for Kent Wildlife Trust. How are you feeling right now? Oh, couldn't be happier, couldn't be happier. I mean, they did exactly what we were hoping they would do. The matriarch leading the herd out, checking that everything was okay, and then she sort of gave them the nod, and out the younger females came. We couldn't have wanted it better than that. Absolutely perfect. That's really great to hear. It was wonderful to see how relaxed they were. Um, so now that they are out in the woods, what's the next steps? Like, what's the next phase of this project? Well, now it's just all about the bison out there doing their business, being bison, starting to manage that habitat. They'll, they'll spend the first few days probably wandering around, trying to suss out the, the size of the area that they've got, working out what's good to eat. And, uh, and we just cannot wait to see how that starts to change the woodland over time and how we can start to see these kind of, uh, this woodland coming back to life. So you mentioned there the kind of changes in the woodland. What sort of changes are you expecting to see and how will that affect things? 
Well, we'll really start, we'll start to see some, some big kind of structural changes. As they start to um, eat their way through different plant species, they'll start to actually, some trees will start to die off and we'll see, see some pockets of open areas into the woodland. That brings light down to the woodland floor and then that allows for a new flush of vegetation to come up. So we'll start to see the woodland go from being in straight rows and, and neat lines to being a bit more all, mic all mixed up and uh, all these different structures coming in place, which is fantastic for our native wildlife. So many different spaces for them to occupy, so many new things for, the for them to take advantage of and eat. All of that bison dung going out in there as well, fantastic for all sorts of invertebrates. It's just going to be an absolutely, you know, a bonanza for wildlife on site. Sounds amazing. And what are some of the species that you expect to maybe see coming back as a result? Wow, I mean, it'd be very, very difficult to predict, but there are so many things that we know need these kind of uh, different structures in woodland. We know that nightingales like thick, scrubby vegetation with loads and loads of, uh, uh, of, of, of sort of different stems to take advantage of, uh, just the sort of thing that bison create. We know that we have lesser spotted woodpeckers, our rarest woodpecker. We have them here on the site, but they need standing deadwood. That's exactly what the bison can create by ring barking trees and, let, and letting some die off. Absolutely fantastic for lesser spotted woodpeckers. But also maybe if we get some slightly more open areas uh, with the un other animals that are coming on site too, to start to turn over the soil, pigs and things like that, we maybe sort of start to see uh, turtle doves or even nightjar, which we lost here a few years ago. It'd be great to see those species coming back. That sounds amazing. And how are you going to be monitoring the project? Because I know lots of other projects, by the sounds of it, are going to be keeping an eye on what you're doing. So, yeah, how will the project be monitored? We have been monitoring absolutely everything here. It's probably one of the biggest ecological monitoring programs going on in the country at the moment. It's absolutely vast. Everything from, we start from the small things. We start from, uh, you know, the soil and what's living in there. We're doing sort of DNA analysis of what's living in the soil to all those structural things. We have a, my colleague Cora has been out on site for months. Uh, she's got 143 vegetation monitoring points all across the site, recording absolutely every species, the structure, the size of every tree, so that we know exactly how that's changing over over time and so we're monitoring virtually everything you imagine the breeding birds um yeah the insect life that's on site and we're just you know recording all of those things because in an unpredictable situation like this you don't know exactly where the change is going to be but we know it's going to be exciting and we can't wait to see it happen stan that sounds absolutely amazing i'm so excited to kind of see what happens next with this project thank you very much indeed very thank you so, as you heard just there, so much exciting stuff to come. And a lot of this hard work and the fact that the bison were so relaxed when they came out, it's a lot of it down to the hard work and dedication from our two amazing bison rangers. They've been doing a lot of work up to this point, but their role is going to change now. They're still going to have lots of work to do, but now their role has changed now that the bison are out in the woods. So I recorded a video, an interview with both, both Tom and Don, who are the two bison rangers. So let's watch that VT now. Oh, sure. We, we've got the most amazing job. <laughs> uh, the welfare of the bison is of the utmost importance to us. So we, we're going to be monitoring the bison very closely, making sure they, they settle in. We'll be doing regular body condition scoring, uh, taking fecal samples just to make sure that bison are healthy. They're gaining weight when they should be, not losing too much weight um, in, in wintertime. Um, and another very important part of the job is maintaining the infrastructure, making checking, doing regular fence checks and making sure everything's working, maintaining it. And, uh, and a, a vital part of the job is acting as a conduit between the conservation efforts and, and the public. So just uh, uh, speaking to the public and, and explaining why projects like this are so important today. And I mean, wow, how exciting to have a free roaming herd of bison five miles from Canterbury. What an experience. <laughs> how have the bison been so far? Absolutely incredible and um, just so relaxed and calm and um, you're never sure what you're going to get when they come off the back of the trailer but um, been absolutely fantastic um, a perfect matriarch um, we couldn't have asked for a better in individual um, like I said calm and collected um, quite inquisitive getting to know the space quite well um, so far and um, yeah and just eating really well got a really good appetite which is what we want to see um, and uh, yeah we, we think that she's going to be perfect for the leader of the group um, and, and as I said yeah really couldn't have asked for a better individual so once the bison are released, how will you know where they are? Yep, so um, we've got a really um, uh, excellent uh, collaboration going on with Smart Parks. Um, they're actually a Netherlands-based company, but it's the first collaboration in the UK. Um, and what we'll have is we'll have a collar on the matriarch because she's the one who leads the, the herd. Essentially, collaring her, we kind of know where the rest of the herd are at any one time. 
Um, so we'll attach this collar um, and there's a GPS unit on, on the collar. That pings off to one of our uh, um, antenna that are based around the site, which then pings to our, our phones or our desktop. And that gives us a, a, essentially like a live feed of where the bison are so we can map uh, where they're frequenting, where do they like going in the morning, where do they like going in the evening, what's their favourite spots. Um, and that really helps us as well from, from a welfare point of view, from a safety point of view. So um, we'll be able to, to track them essentially in, in real time. Um, that coupled with our obviously are you know the, the sort of the old-fashioned tracking skills as well so um, we'll be using a bit of everything brilliant thank you Cheers. welcome back thank you very much to uh, Tom and Don for those interviews earlier on in the week so if you've just joined us the bison are out they are in the woods it has been a great success so I'm excited to be joined now by Vicky and Alicia who are part of Kent Wildlife Trust and Wildwood Trust and uh, I want to know now that the bison are out there how can members of the public kind of get involved if they potentially want a sneak peek um, Vicky I'll come to you first regards kind of the opportunity can people see them how does that work well, yeah, so it's a, it's a nature reserve, so there's still going to be like public foot, footpaths that people can come and walk on and see see the bison, obviously it's through, uh, through a fence, so it's nice and safe. Um, but with regards to getting involved, there's obviously uh, volunteering opportunities, a lot of the, the survey work, you know, we're looking for volunteers to undertake some of those as well. Um, but also through donations to Kent Wildlife Trust and to Wildwood Trust as well, that supports all of the conservation work that we're doing. So there's plenty of opportunities for, for everyone to get involved. Amazing. And is it safe for people to kind of come and visit the woods? Absolutely. So, as I mentioned, there's infrastructure, there's fencing in place so that it allows the bison to do their wild thing, to do their natural behaviour um, and not be bothered by people. Um, but it also gives people the opportunity to see this wilding project um, and see all the great stuff that bison can do for this reserve. Brilliant. And Alicia, can you tell me a little bit more? I believe you have a bison festival coming up. What is a bison festival all about? <laughs> so on Sunday the 24th, which is this coming Sunday, we have the bison festival. So it's just an opportunity for everybody, for the project team, but most importantly for the local community that live around here to come and celebrate the arrival of these animals. So we're going to have some footage, footage we've taken today, but also some footage of the bison exploring their home in the coming week. On a screen, we're going to have talk and tours by members of the team by our bison rangers we're going to have kids activities local businesses so it's just an opportunity to celebrate really and be like we've made it and we've made it with the support of the local community and to celebrate together i think is the key key component really absolutely and uh, it just you know you guys are putting so much hard work everyone from the team how does it feel to for them to be out kind of seeing them go out how did you feel oh, i don't know i don't know if there are words just so excited and pleased and a smidge of relief I think <laughs> just to top it off Amazing. and Vicky it's just so emotional I mean as, as you mentioned it's been three years in the making um, Kent Wildlife Trust and Wildwood Trust have been work, working together to make this project happen and it's been absolutely phenomenal and when we pulled those gates open and let them out I was like a little tear in my eye <laughs> it was like oh my god this is absolutely amazing so um, yeah we're really really excited and we just want to see how they're going to do now and and see all the good work that they can do amazing thank you very much to both of you it's been really lovely to see and i'm so excited to kind of see and keep track of what comes next thank you thank so as we said there so much hard work has gone in from everyone from both of these two amazing charities so a huge congratulations to everyone involved and as we said thank you very much again to the players of the people's postcode lottery and to everyone who has donated sponsored turned up generally supported these great charities and continues to do so to allow them to do this amazing work that's going on right here as we heard you can get involved we have our bison festival on the 24th of july you can also just come and visit there are new walks um, in place so come up to uh, west blean and thorndon woods up here you can check out the website to find out more information you have uh, wildwoodtrust.org and you also have kentwildlifetrust.org.uk and wilder blean is the name of this project thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to everyone in the team here for making this a very exciting and successful day. We hope you will join us up here very soon. Thank you very much and goodbye.